Our guest today is the frontman and singer for the legendary band Sepultura. They've been touring nonstop for years and still performing at a very high level. So to a band like us, that's very motivating and inspiring. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Let's get into it. Please welcome Derek Green. Life. Is this happening? Is this happening oh right God. now? You ever have those moments? Crazy. You ever have those moments when like this is happening right now and like you're super present in the moment? Absolutely. You're like on stage. Yeah. I've had that where it's terrifying at the same time, extremely joyful yeah. moment. You know, it's just so it's surreal. You know, it's something that I always try to step back into because I, I think I love playing live music so much because of that feeling of being in that moment happening you know so powerfully you know it's it's really hard to explain to a lot of people i haven't been on stage but you're feeling that energy yeah um you're giving off that energy with um you know a band that you hopefully love and you love doing that with and you're creating this yeah. and it's just circling you know this energy is just flowing around the room and Ever since I was a kid, even being in the audience, you have that feeling too. You know, you you're do. really in the moment, and uh, that's what drew me into doing heavy music. That that incredible uh, sense of togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. What was the first live band that you saw? Well, one of the first like live bands that I saw, like with rock acts, was probably David Lee Roth. Um, oh, right shit. after he left Van Halen. So Whoa. we had the, you know, the Dope. killer band, yeah. you know, Steve Vai and Dude. like every legend in his band. And he was on fire, you know, it was just like, wow. You know, he was all over the radio, all wow. over MTV, you know, day TV, yeah. you know, it was yeah. huge. And uh, that, that, that was one of the first things I think Rat opened up. <laughs> But I really Rat wasn't, open? yeah, yeah. I mean, I was Jeez. really into to Van Halen and David Lee Roth, but the first like hardcore punk show was probably Chromax. Chromax, yeah. That was a band that that gave you that feeling. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That that was definitely the band that made me want to to them and Bad Brains. You know, like after seeing those two shows, um, pretty close to the, to each other in the eighties, early eighties. I was fourteen years old. I started going to shows. Um, I, I just had never seen anything like that before, you know, just yeah. everyone's body into the music, you know, slamming and flipping, jumping and just, yeah. and I, and I liked the diversity of the, of the scene, the hardcore scene. That was something that was very different in the rock scene going to a show that I noticed. I was like, wow, I am the only black person here. You know, as a kid, I was Whoa. just like, wow, this is intense. You know, like I felt really kind of. Out on the outside, you know, a lot of times I didn't know that many black kids that were listening to heavy rock music um, in my neighborhood or, or at all. Um, and so there's just very few. But with the hardcore and punk rock scene, I felt there was uh, some familiarity, you know, um, that was going on where it's like, wow, this is some, you know, bad brains. I was like, wow, these are all black guys with dreads, you know, playing super aggressive music. And I mean, it was just something really new to me and something I'd never seen. So um, the lyrical content of hardcore and punk rock I was really attracted to I was talking a lot about social issues and politics and fitting in and not fitting in. And so a lot of those lyrics I could relate to. And so it just was a perfect match for me. I mean, in the Chrome match at their show, they had books, you know, and I was just like, oh my God, I'm getting this book and this book. And really? Yeah. I mean, that was the first time I was really introduced to the idea of um, vegetarianism or veganism um, because those books were talking about uh, plant based lifestyle and of Krishna because they were Chrome mags were into, um, at least the singer was. Uh, my friend John Joseph was really into uh, a hardcore lifestyle as far as um, plant-based um, Indian culture, Krishna, and everything. So it was something that got me started me thinking about that whole philosophy yeah. idea. I was like, "Wow, this band is really out there." 
You know, they're talking about things that nobody I know is really talking about. So that just, I mean, I love books. Um, I still do. I grew up reading all the time. So it was just like really appealing to me. I was like, this is where I should be, you know? Yeah. That's interesting how you went to a Harker show and you got books. <laughs> mm -hmm. I never heard that in my life. And that's awesome. But talk about getting like the most pure information when you're young and s you got you got like words coming out you got like music coming out you it's like what everything you know? i mean it was it was really amazing you know is uh, that you had that choice that freedom of just checking it out and seeing for yourself you know like i was really i mean i started reading and i didn't instantly become like a vegan from reading i was like i was yeah. completely like skeptical of course you know i was young and just anything that came in front of me, I was like, I was going to question it. You know, if I just wanted to know for myself and check out. So I was like, ah, I don't believe in any of this, you know, as far as, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's going to change my life, not eating meat. And I was like, I love meat. It tastes good. I don't know why I would stop, you know, like yeah. this is ridiculous, but it was something I never, ever thought about. The only time I recognized something like that was from my uncle. And he was probably the first plant-based person that I ever met but there wasn't a name for vegan back then. You know, he was, I, I just thought he was like very hippie-ish. He would come to the house oh. with his own food. You know, he's like, no, I'm good. I'm, I don't need this. I'll make my own oh. food. And uh, I always thought it was interesting. I was like, huh, Uncle Steve has got his own meal. I guess he doesn't like our cooking here. <laughs> yeah. Especially be, being so young, you don't know how to process that. Yeah. Like, you know, I, like, you know, like, what, like, what is he doing? Yeah, I had no idea, but I just remember, you know, vividly just him bringing out his own stuff, his own food, and just being very particular about that. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 50. Wow. No, yeah, how, yeah. how old were, oh, were you? Oh, then? I was probably eight. Eight? Eight? Eight or seven. Man, you're way ahead of me. I didn't really know what... <laughs> what eating my like, vegetarian was until I was maybe 18 or something mm -hmm. like no concept of anything that related to food I don't know I just ate it I, I think that's very common though Unfortunately, you know, especially growing up in America I mean yeah. nobody would I mean honestly we did have a class in schools like home ec and you would learn to cook and sew and you had to take it and this was in junior high school um, but it had like that pyramid, you know, it was like, this is the food chain, you know, you have like yeah. meat on top and then everything below, yeah. just something like a weird chart with like tons of dairy and meat and yeah. all this information was yeah. coming from those industries. They were paying for that education for like, yeah, you need milk for strong bones and meat for muscles and protein to survive, yeah. to live as a human being. Yeah. They kind of put that in your head. It does. And and it, it was like charts in all the schools. They, it was the curriculum for everywhere in the U.S. Yeah. Like the teaching basis, you know, this ridiculous pyramid. But um, yeah, nobody was really questioning it then. And I think now they just know a lot more about what's going on. And they just realize that, hey, there's a lot of processed food. If you look over the past 30, 40 years in the U.S., you just see – the decline in, in people's health here, you know? Yeah. I mean, it would, tremendously. And it's because of their lifestyle, you know? It's because of the food that we're given and we were told that, hey, that's okay. We were never questioned it. It was like just kind of pushed upon us with a lot of advertisement <laughs> and yeah. persuasion. And it, you just yeah. never think about it. And if you're here living here and living that life, never questioned it. You never would question it. You did. And I and I didn't, you know, yeah. for so many years, you know. Yeah, it's it's strange that. Did you find that when you read that book uh, from John from the Crow Mags, mm -hmm. that was maybe like the first time where like you're just undoing all like those images you've been fed mm -hmm. since you were a kid? Well, not immediately because that was uh, coming from you know philosophy and old philosophy, the Gita, and. Um, there were other books that started to come into to play that I, I started to read, started to gravitate towards. And there were other people that I met and it was coming from a different point of view. Um, there were books like by Upton Sinclair, there was uh, The Jungle. It was one book that I had to read in school. And it's the author lived with the family from Eastern Europe. He lived in uh, like it was kind of 
the environment of Chicago, the meatpacking industry was happening there, and the Industrial Revolution was booming. So creating a lot of meat, a lot of Eastern Europeans were working these factories and kids, and there were no laws or anything, no USDA at that time. So it's just like Whoa. whatever goes, you know, people's arms and limbs getting chopped off there, dangerous conditions. Um, and he wow. was writing about it. He was witnessing it. He didn't tell the family he was living with that he was a, a writer. And he lived with the family on one of those places in, in their house. And the houses were set up pretty much on the factory site. So they never left. They were just pretty much like, kind of like slaves living there, working there wow. day in, day out with like no laws, nobody you know, regulating anything. They were just like, yes, money, 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 like those big meat industries were making they're like that was like thriving time for them pay low pay you know they don't have to do i mean they could just do whatever they want which they did yeah and then he wrote about this afterwards and then people were in shock about the conditions that, and the things that were happening there so they came up with the usda uh, regulating all that because of him and americans were yeah. shocked because they had no idea what was going on there so that was another book that kind of opened my eyes to the industry side. So it was kind of looking at it a different way. And then reading more about it, I was like, oh, wow, I'm seeing how it affects the earth. You know, it like grew over time. Like I was a vegetarian at first and then I became a vegan. Yeah. Wow. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy when you just realize what like mass producing meat is. You're like, whoa, that, that's real? <laughs> like when we hear about it for like the first time it's, it's very shocking I, it is shocking i mean they did a really good job of shielding that from the public because they don't yes. i mean who's going to want to eat that after knowing exactly what they're doing and them yeah. sh showing you how they do it yeah i mean that would it doesn't make any sense for them that's not good business so it's better just to keep it hidden which they have and they still do yeah and um you know, they're able to do what they do. I mean, the more that people know about it, the more that comes out because there's a lot of laws protecting them from having to show what they're actually producing, which I find uh, absurd um, that, you know, a lot of people are starting to get hip to the, the fact that, hey, they're, these guys are really don't give a shit about anything they're, get, they're putting out there. And, um, you know, it's harming us in, in, in every way possible, not only us, but the planet around us they don't give a shit about any of that yeah um so but it's great that there is this knowledge coming out and there's other options that are coming out as well yeah now 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 we have options right i mean back when you were oh, you yeah. know <laughs> eating vegetarian and vegan how did you do that in the 90s dude yeah that was difficult it was a lot of suffering and, th and it gave you know a, a kind of a bad name because there wasn't the money backing um you know, the propaganda of pushing a healthy lifestyle or any of that. So, yeah. um, you know, it's trial and error, you know, like struggling, like figuring it out and figuring out what's good for my body. You know, it's not always going to be the same for everyone. Yeah. So um, that took time, you know, just time and patience and just having a better understanding of like that whole lifestyle and what I could make or eat on my own. And then there's a lot of businesses that have come up um, throughout yeah. the years. So. Um, people start to take it ex very seriously, you know, in, in a way where um, they're going for taste, you know, a lot more, <laughs> which helps. You, <laughs> you know? probably love that. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. They, so they figured out like, hey, we got to make this taste good, you know, and there's ways of doing that, you know, just like naturally. It doesn't have yeah. to be super produced or anything yeah. like that. So, um, you know, a lot of chefs and people have just really stepped up, I mean, tremendously in the past 20 years. Yeah. And uh, being uh, having an outside perspective, it feels like this is still very recent for like the like, like the vegan, the way of eating vegan and being vegetarian is like, oh, wait, we need to have more options. We, we, mm -hmm. we need to find a new way to, like, to live and cook and, mm -hmm. and make things, you know, taste good. I, I think, <laughs> I mean, definitely. I think one of the things that kind of turn people away from is the ex how extreme people can be in that plant-based world. Of course. Which turned me off too. And I was... You know, yeah. I am a vegan. I was like, man, these people are really aggressive and really annoying. And, and I, yeah. I get it. You know, I, I understand why they're aggressive. You know, they want that change. You know, we want that change to happen. Yeah. Not only for, um, 
you know, that person, but for the planet in general, for everyone. Uh -huh. um, because it's not a selfish thing to become, uh, you know, vegan or plant-based, but a lot of people get very defensive if you're screaming at them like, hey, yeah. you should change this. But it's, yeah. I always felt that was a really, um, it's not a good way of going, you know, trying to see people your perspective, you know. You, uh, there's better ways of showing that. And I, I think the proof is in, your actions, you know, and and so, for me, I just really try to take care of myself. And people have questions, then I like to ask, you know, answer those questions for them. That's great. And um, and just by lifestyle, you know, living by that example of like what I'm preaching, you know. So people just gravitate towards it once they see, you know, in action. They're like, oh, what are you eating over there? That smells yeah. good. You know, it's like, action. oh, you want to try? You know, it's like, yeah. And, yeah. Then the questions will happen, like, oh, well, so what is it that you eat during the day? And I mean, all these questions that came about it ended up uh, where I was like, man, I should have a show, a TV show showing how it is on the road, yeah. the people that I meet, showing that they're not crazy. They're not all like you know, hippies or some weird stereotype that they have. Um, it, you know, it's a, it was a big, big challenge, I felt. And I found... Another person that felt the same way, Tanya O'Callaghan, um, she's the co-host of the show that we've been working on called Highway to Health. And um, she's from Ireland. She's an incredible bass player. She kills it. And um, she's an activist. And, and so we together we can do a lot of interviews with different people that you wouldn't imagine, um, not only vegans. You know, we're really going after people because we're not really going out to people that are vegans already. We're going out to people who aren't, you know, we're not going to yeah. preach to the choir. Mm -hmm. So we want to have people who aren't a hundred percent vegan. We want to see like, what are the, you know, talk with them, have a conversation, show that conversation, introduce them to something new. They may have never thought of or tried and hear their point of view and listen to their questions that they might have yeah. and just show like, this is not nothing that's so crazy. This is actually something that a lot of people should be thinking about, you know, because it's connected um, in so many ways and aspects of our life, you know, what we're eating, our lifestyle, you know, it really has an effect on all of us, on each other, you know. Yeah, I really love the uh, Highway to Health idea. It's, 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 I think it's awesome, especially uh, you're, you're probably going to different places in oh, the yeah. world. Right. I mean, we before the lockdown, we were able to shoot uh, about eight episodes um and so for the first season it's done and we decided like wow. hey we're gonna do this ourselves um it's difficult to explain the idea to somebody that's never traveled it's never been in a band it's never toured you know who you know an office person who's like an executive is gonna be like oh that's a great idea but i can't envision it so yeah. you know it was great that we had people who are supporting us people who believe in that movement yeah, and we were able to film everything and do everything ourselves, how we envisioned it, and so um, it, that was a challenge. You know, I'd never done anything like that before, yeah. and it was really stepping out of the the comfort zone of, you know, I, I've been on stage and everything, but it's very different in front of uh, cameras and and set up place and to do interviews and things like that. So it was something I had to to learn about um, Tanya as well. Um, and it was a great learning process, you know, it's like, wow, you know, traveling on the road, we went to uh, so many different places. We really wanted to show where we come from. So we went to each of our hometowns and showed like how we started and the changes that have happened um, since we lived there. So we went to Ireland um, and Tanya's home uh, town. It's wow. like very small, uh, Mullingar and, uh, we went to Cleveland, where I grew up. Went to Cleveland. Yeah, we went to Cleveland. Wow. It's not as exotic and glamorous, and yeah. but um, that's the funny part about it. You know, you get to see this diversity on the show. That's great. Um, we were in Brazil. We were in L.A. Um, we were on the Kiss cruise. Um, I mean, it's the show is going. You know, all over. We're interviewing like MMA fighters and, and just. It's it, incredible. It's, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm just really anxious for people to see this. That's great. I mean, that, that's something, that's like an infinite idea of train. Like, you, oh, yeah, you, absolutely. You, there's always places to go. There's always new things coming out. Oh, yeah. You know, and, um, and what also what you're doing, which is very important, is that you're, 
you're putting out there real information, mm -hmm. like to, to fight off like the bad. Oh you know, yeah, that, people absolutely. Need, people need to hear and see what you're mm -hmm. doing, and, and it's I, crucial. And I think it's great to go in with like some type of a humor about it too, Huge. because you know, Huge. it's. I mean, there's so many serious things that are out there, and I think food yeah. is fun. Um, talking with people is fun. It's a great way to unite people through food, yeah. and and having that. So it should be something that's light and not so banging with like politics or anything like yeah. that. Just I. That aggressiveness is just a big turnoff to me, you know. And so, um, I, I I love to hear people's perspectives and let them talk as well. Not only just be talking over them or talking to them, you know. Yeah. Have like really great conversations. Yeah, it's uh, once they see you being so open minded and inviting, that will also allow someone else to be, you know, open minded. Hey, maybe I wouldn't eat this or try this, but since this person's so open minded and willing to hear me out, right. I'm open to try what, and, what they're and doing. I'm actually really happy to cheer people on when they're like, hey, I'm going to try like one day a week, not eat meat. Great. It's like, that's fantastic. You know, that's a great, great start and, great. and cheer them on or help them on. But yeah, because I see a lot of people in the past who would just be like, one day, only one day. Like, come on, man. It's like, yeah. you're not real. You're not real. <laughs> that's not real. You know, that's not a commitment. It's just like, come on, give, the, a start. give them a yeah, break, it's a man. It's a great start. They never did that before in the past. You know, yeah. I never heard of people like, yeah, my family going to have one day where we're not going to eat meat in a week. I mean, that's a tremendous change. That's um, huge, I think. Bigger than they, I think they can possibly imagine. Because like I keep saying, like everything is connecting. You know, our decisions on um, what we buy and the products that we buy have yeah. a big impact. Because that's, you know, it's powerful, the you know, having that money and, and consuming. We do a lot of consuming here. <laughs> and the fact that we consume a lot we of do. just crap and trash and just yeah. the worst things, you know. I, I think people can have a better understanding of what they're consuming. There's uh, products that are coming out and different companies that are more... Uh, translucent you know you're able they're not afraid to show you how they're creating their product and um yeah. and what they're doing for the planet and how they're involved with their customers you know this is really there's a lot more of those companies out there it's great yeah that's kind of the future where like you know, you, you invite the uh, cameras in hey this is what we do you know and that's very inspiring to see oh yeah i mean because we because we want to see that absolutely i mean i would i'd rather put my money there i mean yeah. there were a lot of things i just didn't know about certain products I was buying and, and just how destructive they really are because we're, we're at that time, you know, we've been at that time where things are just, just spinning out of control, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, it's, 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 I mean, if you're living in especially big cities and, and stuff like that in the U S and you have that opportunity to have those choices and yeah. make some changes, I think what's going to be the challenge is showing this, um, showing this this change that's happening in smaller places you know because we're we're going to be with this show we're going to be going to a lot of different places not only big cities we want to show how you, you can do these things in smaller cities you know start with these little changes you know that's because great. that's where it really um can have a big impact you know so because i hear a lot of times like well in the u.s you have that but we don't have those options here and we're not mm -hmm. able to do that here but um, there are things you can do in other places, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to show that and learn, you know, at the yeah. same time while we're doing this. Yeah, and you have, like, the best thing of all. You have the experience. Right. It's like you've been in, in like, the Asia territories when mm -hmm. there's no other <laughs> options. I can't, what did you do? Yeah. I mean, when, a lot of it was there. just, like, you already had, like, Plan B, so you would be carrying a lot of stuff that's, you really? know, like peanut butter. Or, you know, <laughs> it's just like the number, it's like, I got peanut butter right here, you <laughs> know. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And I got or my like, latte. I mean, you, you would come up with, like, clever, clever things. And it just, you know, for people that couldn't understand, it's like, just give me, you know, vegetables or something or, like, yeah. bread or, you know, just very basic grains, fruits, you know, and, yeah. and survive and be able to survive. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe someone that's an outsider that might hear that you put you probably, you probably heard all, all the questions. Okay, you know, where do you get your energy? Because especially being out on the, on the road, how does how did that affect how you feel? And then you have to play a show. Mm, I, I think it. I mean, I, I mean for me, it's hard to say because I haven't eaten meat, and I mean it's over thirty years. So wow. that energy, 
I mean, a lot of people don't realize that it takes a lot to digest meat. It's mm -hmm. not a day, two days. Yeah. Um, and that takes a lot of energy, a lot more mm -hmm. than energy than digesting fruits or vegetables. Yeah. Um, and so that's already like a negative and in, in, in the fact, you know, like you can get energy from fruits and vegetables. You also have to think, you know, this protein, a lot of people always ask, like, where are you getting this protein to maintain your muscles? And I was like, yeah. plants. They're like, what do you mean plants? They're like, meat, meat, that's where the protein is. I was like, well, animals are, are just kind of in the middle. You know, all protein sources come from plants life so the yeah. animals are eating the plants but they're in the middle of the process of you getting the protein so i go directly to the source the plants you know yeah. so it's just like you're going to go through the process of like killing an actual animal just for that protein when you can get the protein it's getting from those plants interesting you know so all the the protein that animals are getting it, 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 starting from plants so it's better i mean it's just more effective to go directly to the source and it's much totally. easier to digest than yeah. animal protein um and as you get older it becomes harder to digest animal protein which any doctor will tell you as well like yeah you always heard that back in the past like you should cut down on eating the meat you know yeah. a little bit like uh, get some more greens in your diet yeah because it goes through you very quickly the fiber everything and then, and then you just yeah, yeah just you want that out you don't want this animal that's already been killed traveled many many miles in a freezer from somewhere usually yeah um unless you're you're a hunter and you're getting it directly mm -hmm. you know you're living in a small place it's like yeah i hunted that and we killed it and we got it and we used it you know that's it's i'm not talking about those people i'm talking yeah. about like burger king mcdonald's <laughs> every day that's like you're not a hunter you're not doing any of that yeah. so that's not an excuse like what about hunters and yeah, i'm like i'm not attacking dude. hunters i'm not attacking i mean those people are like that's something entirely different. I'm talking about like a mass consumption, too much. And so I just think if people like really start thinking about cutting back, um, they'll notice these small differences that happen, especially in their health, you know. Totally. It's undeniable, you know, proof, you know, that yeah. uh, changing that diet can, you know, cure a lot of the illnesses that people have. Yeah. You know, which are caused by what they're eating, you know. Totally. Yeah, thank you for clearing it up. That was the uh, that was like my generic question I had for you. I'm like, you know, you always hear, you know, where do you get the protein? <laughs> and and I, I mean, and honestly, I had that question too because literally, like, you know, I'm on like the vegetarian train, not like hardcore, but like the past like two mm -hmm. months, I'm very nice. very recent. You know, like not like I knew there's a big difference when I stopped getting pepperoni pizza from Domino's. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, what? Who am I becoming? Is this what, is this what growing up is? <laughs> We're growing up, man. Well, Sick. I mean, it's funny because I, I haven't had any of like fast food type stuff in such a long time, but now all these fast food places are creating these vegan menus. If you notice, so like crazy, Del huh? Taco, they're like, oh, we have a we have a plant based taco. What you know, just fuck? don't get any cheese. There's avocado. There's Beyond Meat, and wow. and and I I had to try all these vegan options at these <laughs> fast food places just to know like all right I'm never going to these places at, ever, but there's times on the road there is where it was yeah. just like. I remember like really young, just like going to McDonald's and just like, yeah, could I have a hamburger with uh, no hamburger? You're like, the, they were like, I can't do that. They're like, <laughs> sir, you just asked for a hamburger <laughs> without the hamburger on the bun? They're like, what? Are you crazy? And I was like, yeah, I just want the cheese, the lettuce, the tomato, but no hamburger. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes, please, just no hamburger. Okay, so no hamburger. Uh, yeah. and it was just like laughing, and it was just yeah. ridiculous. But it's great that these options are out there. You know, people yeah. can change up. There's almost all the fast food places have these options now. Yeah, it's just not by coincidence because people are are changing. They're starting to realize that. And even wow. in Brazil, in the place where it's a big meat eating country, I mean, they have the churrascaria. Dude, where they have their steakhouse the meat right in front Dude. of me, like slicing it down. I was just like, Jesus, just like blood flying on my plate. <laughs> I was like, I'm just it's trying it. to go to the salad bar. <laughs> and uh, but even there, you know, people <laughs> ended up opening up a lot of vegan options, like restaurants and lunch places and buffets, wow. and they're really good. That, that must be a trip for you to see, like it be 
from zero to like seeing places open up. You're like, oh, yeah, what man. the hell? But, but I also notice a lot of people that are getting older who take care of themselves. It's amazing. You see these people yeah. like, oh, that guy's 60 and he's like lifting, you know, and there's like women who are like, you know, triathletes, you know, tri- doing triathlons and they're, you know, in their it's great 60s or late 50s. And, yeah. you know, that's definitely stepped up a lot you know you see a lot of yeah. people are older in age they're much stronger yeah nowadays, it's you great know? you're not a, much of a drinker either huh i stopped i i, I actually love alcohol <laughs> yeah sick <laughs> I, mean, I was definitely not opposed to uh wine or a good beer or yeah a fine whiskey or <laughs> yeah all that stuff but um yeah, I, I guess there was just a lot more negatives as I got older than of course. the the positives. So I was like, all right, let me just weigh this out, you know, and just yeah. go down the list. And I just feel much better not drinking. So Great. I stopped now. It's almost two years. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I mean, it was it was literally just like you know what I'm I'm not gonna do this anymore. And it was like yeah. wow, I saved a lot of money. Yeah. My body was like, my God, thank yes. you. Yes. yes. This is what it feels like, you know? And yep. I mean, yep. just, it's it's really bad when you're just thinking, uh, wow, like, this is what how it is to normally poop. <laughs> you know? It's, like, oh, it's true. Yeah. You, you, you have like, uh, yeah, like, like the morning after, you know? Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, all that gone, all those problems, like, um, I, and I was also getting depressed after mm. drinking like i yeah. drink i was like the happy guy like all right i'm happy oh he's a funny drunk yeah. he's so fun yeah after the next day i was dead to the world you know i started as time went on and huh. i started to feel very depressed after drinking no matter what no matter what yeah it just became huh. you know the next day it was always just dead like i would lose it it was huh. just gone i had no energy um no inspiration um oh that's the worst and it was just i just felt like my body just felt horrible and i was like why am i doing this and paying for this to happen too you know like a lot am, <laughs> just, I, am, I, am I paying for this <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> i'm paying to feel like this oh, yeah. like I, I didn't make any sense yeah and then stopping i was just like wow people are like whoa you look different man you lost a lot of weight oh you don't look so, you know like puffy i'm looking at photos i'm like oh my god we see old photos. Yeah, like, oh, I look, I'm like, damn. I'm fucking puffy, dude. <laughs> I, was like, I was, you know, bloated and just not the best of shape. But I, I mean, the, I mean, the body is so amazing how it can really bounce back. You it know? bounces back. It's oh, good. Man, it's That's incredible. Cool thing about it. It's so yeah. resilient, you know. And so yeah. when you start treating it well, it gives back to you. You're like stronger, you know, you're more alert, you're more focused, you know, Yeah. it, it feeds into, you know, I think eating also has an effect on your mental health as well. It does. You know, when you're eating well, you're feeling well in your mind. And when you're eating this crap and shit and treat, it adds to that depression that a lot of people it does. are consistently going through nowadays, know. you know, more than ever. Especially now. Especially now. You know, and, and you got out in like the nick of time. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it could have gone in a very horrible way with the lockdown. And I know a lot of people are yeah. like diving into the booze. Oh, and yeah, bad habits creep up. Oh, Quick yeah. Too. Man, but I, it's totally understandable. It's like, whoop, this is the end. Oh, here we yeah. go. You know, yeah. and, you know, that attitude. I was like early on, like, nah, I, this is going to end. I want to come out strong on the other end. You know, yeah. I want to be able, you know. Yeah. I don't want to lose that momentum of uh, that positivity, positivity, and I want to. This is now time that I can really focus on myself. Yeah, I, you know, it's like I'm in lockdown. I can go to, I can work out, I can do some type of workout every day. There's no excuse. Absolutely, I can cook great food at home now. There's yeah. no excuse. Yeah, you know, I was like, I'm going to take advantage of this, you know, and so I, I did that. And I, I lost like 25 pounds. I was just doing walks every day, like a little bit, then a little bit more. And then it was yeah. like an hour and a half each day, like four miles, five miles wow. every day. And um, I, doing very little weights, if, like lifting weights, but just push-ups, sit-ups, and walking. Not running, no yeah. impact on my knees or anything. Just Great. consistently walking or doing hikes. Great. Felt amazing you know it's this amazing feeling where 
I didn't have that depression that some people were feeling during the whole lockdown. You know, I felt yeah. really alive. I'd just wake up like, yeah. But also, I'm very fortunate. You know, we are fortunate to live in California. So you have very like important. incredible weather. Yeah. You know, very pretty much every day. So that helps very a lot. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got the uh, vitamin D, and uh, which is crucial for like your for your mood. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D uh, also came out, you know, to anyone that got COVID has, uh, has been shown like 80% of them have like vitamin D deficient, mm -hmm. you know, like just getting that. And walking is underrated too. It's underrated. super underrated. Walking it's is really, huge. It yeah, is. I, I agree 100, 100%. I yeah. mean, it's a fantastic form of exercise. Mm -hmm. Any huge. doctor will tell you. Any doctor will tell you this. Yeah. No matter what age you are, it doesn't matter. You know, there's, it's really something that's healthy all around, you know, for yeah. your mind and your body. Mm -hmm. I would make playlists, yeah. you know, just like things I hadn't heard in a long time and put yeah. to start building it, building and building it. Yeah, that's like three hours of music. That's four <laughs> hours. And I was like, let's do this walk. Yeah. Clearing your mind, start thinking of ideas and, and just totally. things flowing away from like your phone. You know, I'm Jeez. not, I mean, some people would talk and stuff, to, which is cool, but I, I love the fact that I was like, I'm not even going to look at my phone the entire time. And I'm just going to, this is the time for me. Yeah. And, you know, and really enjoy it. And it was, you know, that it was life, you know, really, really kept my spirits up doing you know walking it's yeah. great I'm, yeah. I'm glad i'm glad you're doing that did you ever go out for walks where like there's no music no nothing you're just going out there i'm like i'm gonna go out here i'm gonna let my, my thoughts go and see and see where they go you're like wow <laughs> oh, yeah. i didn't even know i had to process that wow and i just uh something as short as like a 30 minute walk if mm -hmm. you wonder yeah. you're like you go out there and you see the green like the sun and your brain and starts thinking and you start processing some thoughts like oh wow then you're inspired it's insane it's, uh, that you think that's something so natural that everybody does, but I, I mean, I was caught up in the mix of just work, 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 work. You know, I hadn't yeah. stopped playing shows for over twenty years. It was like tour, yeah. tour, tour, tour. Yeah. But I don't. I mean, as artists, I think we have time to sit back and to reflect on certain things and to yeah. really process. And yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of people who who don't have the time or never do that so i yeah. think it was a lot of positive things i heard from different people who were in lockdown that they discovered these little things you're like yeah man i was just outside just looking at these bugs and <laughs> whatever or flowers yeah. or simple yeah. simple things it's just like Huge. beautiful it's beautiful you know beautiful day and just yeah more appreciative you know it's great to see that though i know Especially uh, in your case, where like, you know, you you almost been in a band going on almost twenty five years. Mm -hmm. Just it seems like nonstop. It was nonstop, man. Like once I got in, it was like here we go. You know, a big whirlwind. You know, moving yeah. from New York. Um, I joined the band when I was twenty seven or twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, and we just we never stopped. You know, creating albums, creating music, and touring um non-stop you know and so this was really bizarre like when covid hit the first summer not going out and yeah having a new album that came out in february and then locked down yeah. march and i was just like are you gotta be kidding me same our, our records dropped like the same month right yeah yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. and I was just like man all these years all building these up years. to this yeah <laughs> you know and it's, it's especially in your case like uh you were doing U.S. tours right before that record dropped, and I was hearing some really great things about about you guys. And I was like, "Damn, no, I'm yeah. fucking proud of them, dude. They just been grinding for so long to just to build a name, and they finally they're doing it." Then, then we were talking about going on tour with each other. Yeah, and I'm like, "I'm man. so, I'm, I'm so proud of them." And uh, <laughs> and, and then you guys dropped that record. I'm like, "Damn, this is like a five. This is a great record." Oh, thank you, man. It, it was, Appreciate that. It, it, was, it was great, and uh, you know, to like. You know, y younger bands. I'm not right. saying we're like a young band because we're like in our mid 30s now, but still, like we, you know, I look up to like you guys, and I'm, I'm like, okay, they're they're on tour. They're, you know, I look at Andres, like he's still rocking out, dude. He's in his 50s, <laughs> he's still rocking. Okay, a lot. Yeah, I have no fucking excuses. Yeah, what, what, what do I have to do to do that? And mm -hmm. then when I hear you guys put out great music mm. and still killing it and drawing more people than ever, to us, that's like. It's very inspiring. Oh, man. It's Thank huge, you so man. much, man. It's I mean, huge. it's the same, like, when we were able to tour with you guys, it was just like, 
the, I was like, what is happening? The scene is insane. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like I had never seen anything with such it had been a long time since I'd seen a band so like aggressive and so like physical on stage. Like yeah. when I was just like, damn. I was like, <laughs> where are they getting this from? It was just like, oh my God. Yeah. And that's super inspiring. It's like shit, you know, we I, I love to like learn, you know, it's a learning process, you know, being in a band. And you get inspired by so many musicians. I, I think I, I know I do. Yeah. And um, it's great to to be able to to perform and play on the same stage as somebody that's, you know, giving out so much energy and giving off so many things that you can learn from. So you yeah, know, it was you know it's reciprocal. You know, totally. Like seeing like I was like fuck man, I don't want to be, you know, like so close mind thinking with certain you know aspects of music. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of times in the metal scene it can be. Very close-minded at times, you know. Like true, <laughs> true, I would be true. lying if I didn't say that. Um, yeah. So I always felt it was important for the metal scene. I've seen it grow. At the on the other hand, I've seen it expand in many years, which is exciting yeah. to yeah. see. So I love that aspect. You know, there's more diversity. There's people taking more chances, Great. which is extremely important. Yeah. You know, um, and and that's how you learn to to you know better your craft taking those chances not being afraid and putting yourself out there you know yeah you know and you have a lot of experience with putting yourself out there oh yeah <laughs> you, you put yourself out there in the craziest way mm -hmm. I, I can't i can't imagine what you what you did is a it's a very rare human quality where you were down to join a band that was from a different country guys you have you ever even met them before never met them never heard portuguese like and know it i was so like i was trying to explain this to somebody before i was like you gotta realize i was like everything kind of happened rapidly and things have changed since then yeah technologically um as people you know we have kids families have grown you know yeah. a lot of changes happened this period of time but when i joined I didn't realize how big the band was. Like I knew they were big in the U.S. because I yeah. just pretty much was in the U.S. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I know how people react to them and how it is here. But you gotta, re I mean, if you think about it, I had to go to the library. I had a library card then, and I had to get a book because nobody, there were no, there was, the, I didn't have a computer then. I was like. The internet wasn't like booming everyone had one so <laughs> yeah, i was like i'm yeah. gonna go to the library get a book about brazil and uh i <laughs> remember that and i got a tape from the band here's the tape with one song with no vocals and you're gonna do vocals or whatever you want to do so everybody got those they were looking for that singer and so everyone got their tape um of <laughs> and i sent them back a tape of what i had done that's how long ago it was you know it was it was crazy time so wow. going to brazil i didn't i'd never been there didn't know what portuguese sounded like um i don't think i even knew that they spoke portuguese because i was like the place is surrounded by all you know spanish-speaking countries of course they're speaking spanish it was delusional you know i had i didn't yeah. know anything and i got there and i was like no it's I'm, well i already knew from reading the books about it. i was like oh they speak portuguese yeah. and um it was just mind blowing. I was just in shock, but in a good way because I was really looking forward to meeting them and the culture I knew nothing about. And, and I was just excited just to be there. I was like, oh, I'm going no matter what. I'm going to have a great time, even if we don't get along. Um, and I was just open minded about everything. I was just like, wow, man, this place is incredible. Um, I, I loved it instantly. It was chaotic and insane. And and that's when I realized how kind of how big they were because everyone knew them there. You know, like wow. people like, oh, in cars and autographs, like everywhere that they went, everywhere. You know, it's just like people are just like, yeah, Sepultura, yeah, like freaking out. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, these guys are pretty big here, you know. But then wow. it really dawned on me from being in Brazil and then going out in the world with them. And I yeah. was like, holy shit, this man is bigger than I imagined. Metal is bigger than I imagined. You know, like it yeah. opened my mind. I was like, to so many different things. I didn't realize that 
you know, Indonesia were into metal. I didn't realize that India were into metal or yeah. Mongolia or Kazakhstan. Yeah. Wow. You know, it was mind blowing in that way. So it was just so exciting for me. Like I didn't think about so much of their past. So I was like, this shit is happening now for me. Like I gotta get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta write an album with these guys. Like I had no time to think about questions or like, so what do you think about what they did in the past? I was like, I, I don't know. I was like, I wasn't there in the past. So I was like, I wow. know right now I need to step up. Like this is happening. You know, like we're getting, we're gonna, wow. you know, like open the show for this band. We're gonna play with Slayer. You know, I was like, we're gonna yeah. do a tour with Metallica. I was like, we're doing, you know, like I was Dude. like in the moment, you know, I had no time to think about like, what were they doing in the past? And then I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't even know them then. I was like, I'm sure yeah. it was fantastic because I was a fan of the music, but yeah. this is important right now. <laughs> wow. It's, maybe that approach you did was like, it was innocent. And yes. plus there was so much pressure. You didn't even have time to think. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have time to process. You're absolutely like. right. That Because I had a friend who helped me with the demo, who tried out for Sepultura. And a lot oh. of people don't know about him. And he's a fantastic guitarist. He, he can play many instruments and he tried out for them. And he, and he knew the whole back catalog, you know, to yeah. play and sing. And he's like, yeah, man, he just wanted to do it. And then he was like, I don't want to do this. He's like, this is too, too much. He wanted to work on creating a studio, being at home. And, but he, he wanted that opportunity to try out because yeah. he was such a fan. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was incredible. He gave me some tips before meeting those guys, and I gave him my tape, and then the rest is history. <laughs> Dang. What's the song? There, There's a rumor that the song is Choke. Choke. It was Choke. Are you fucking yeah. serious? That's my favorite yeah. song that you did with those guys. It was Choke, and, and there were other people that did that song. Chuck Billy from Testament. Interesting. Phil. Demo from uh, Machine. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I bet, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's like I, they, I think you can even find their version on YouTube somewhere. Damn, I go on YouTube. Yeah, fuck yeah. Deep dive. Oh, deep dive on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it Choke was exciting. Tape. Oh yeah, <laughs> Choke tape. demos. Mail tape. Yeah, <laughs> mail tape in. But I think on my tape, it was very different. I mean. They heard the stuff that I did in the past, and it wasn't metal. It was like hardcore and melodical. Yeah. Cool. And I think what they were thinking is like, "Hey, we want to have somebody that's completely different and somewhere we can go in the future with this." You know, he can scream and he can sing. So yeah. maybe we can do something in the future with that and, and expand and do, um, and not do the same thing. You know, they they yeah. didn't want to try to find somebody trying to be like the old singer. Which most yeah. people are sending in their tapes trying to sound like that. Yeah. And so that kind of killed it for them. Mine was like radically different. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's what attracted them, that ability to be flexible. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the band and, and you had like this natural like, all right, we're, lo we're looking forward. Mm. You know, how, and how are mm -hmm. we going how, right. how to be, how, is, how are we going to be the band in this moment and, mm -hmm. then, and then let this... Uh, and still be able to innovate for the future. Right, you, right. You guys just had that natural... Yeah, I think we all were in that state of mind that, I mean, even before I joined the band, they were already in that state of mind. Like, yeah. let's not do the same thing. Let's just keep it fresh and, and new. You know, we're growing, we're changing. So mm -hmm. our music is going to follow in that way if it's going to be very honest. Yeah. You know, a lot of things were happening to each of us in our own personal lives so that's going to have an effect on the music as well yeah so but it's a learning process because i didn't know those guys for a long period of time like they had a chance to tour yeah. play together you know again their their culture everything you know yeah. um being brothers you know in the band i know bro. and so then it was like really trying to it took i knew already like hey it's gonna take some time before I get adjusted, we all get adjusted, and for fans to get adjusted. So I didn't think it would be like super popular right off the bat. I already knew it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get so much shit, you know, like from yeah. whoever. That's why the first album was like against, you know, everybody was like kind of yeah. against us, yeah. we felt. And uh, and we were against them. We're like, you know, fuck off, we're gonna do what we wanna do. And it was a battle, you know, for many, many years of just, you know, just doing what we wanna do. Yeah. 
It's great that where where were you at personally when you joined the band then and then the years that followed because that's a lot of pressure to walk into. One, just joining a band that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Let's say they're not even like a big band. Just joining, oh yeah, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm basically marrying three guys. Pretty much. Um, I Pretty mean, much. How did you handle that? I mean, the girlfriend that I was seeing um, for a long time pretty long period of time I was living with and um she broke up with me once I got in the band um and that was just I didn't have time to really um to figure out what was going on I was just like in the moment of like I'm in Brazil now and this is happening and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna go on the road and then we're gonna write an album all yeah. this stuff and I was like and you're breaking up with me and I, and that was also at an age where it's like really young which is not an excuse, but it's like I'm sure we could have communicated better um, at that time, but we didn't, and and we split up. And so I was single, just joined the band, so I didn't have a no family as far as like kids or anything like that. So it's like wow. I can go anywhere. And it's like I just dove right into work. You know, it's like this is what I've been waiting for to play yeah. with the group that's professional. Um, that, that are established um that you know i can really learn from and so i was all in you know it was at that time we would do promo tours around the world before going on tour so the label would pay for you to do all these talking and radio and photos and pre-tour like for a month around wow. the world and they would flip the bill for that when they had a lot Dude. of money because Again, it was a time when everybody was switching over to CDs. Yeah. The biggest scam. The big <laughs> scam that were, I mean, they were charging yeah. like, what, $20 a CD, and it cost them way less than yeah. an album to make. So they're, the labels had yeah. tons of money. They're like, yeah, yeah, go on the promo tour around the world for a month, and then you go on tour. And what? the first place that I went to was like Amsterdam, and that's where the Whoa. label Roadrunner was kind of like founded there. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, because the owner Casey's Dutch, and so it was it, it all started what? Roadrunner. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was one of the first places oh. that we went for the promo tour, and uh, I, I I I fell in love with the city. I was just like, oh my first time there. I was like, this Dude. is amazing. I was yeah. like, people just ride around their bike. You don't need a car. <laughs> people are mad cool. I was just like, it's beautiful. There's history there, you know. It's yeah. a diversity of people. It's fantastic. And I lived there for two years. I was just like, oh, I'm going to live here. Like, I, my friend wow. Marlena, who lives here now, um, she used to work for Roadrunner, and she worked at Epitaph Records at that time. And, and she was like, oh, I have a room here. You can stay there for free. You know, wow. I was like, oh. Yeah. I'm there. You know, I was like yeah. living that way. I was like, I have no responsibilities Dude. except for this band. Yeah. Let's get this, you know? So it would be like tour, leave Europe. And I was like, see you guys later. I'm staying here. And then, um, and then we had to write a new album. And then that's when I was like, you know what? It's better if I move to Brazil and we, you know, work on this together. Cause the first album, a lot of it was written before I joined the band. I see. So this was like my chance of, being there from the very beginning, which is yeah. very exciting. Like, oh yeah, because they wanted that type of person that's going to contribute to the writing process of an album. They didn't want like a higher gun. Yeah. You know, they really wanted that interaction from a, another person. Mm -hmm. So that was a big challenge, you know. And of course, everyone looking at us like, gotcha. what are they going to do next? Like, where is this going? Like, yeah. And so um, it was a lot of fun, man. I mean, we were very fortunate to have. Uh, to work with a lot of the people that we did um and we learned a lot from it you know it's just like that label was difficult you know for us roadrunner it was they didn't believe in me um like a big portion of the label didn't and that they were i knew that and so it's just like man i can't wait till we're off of this label yeah so we can you know be surrounded by people that believe in what we're doing so that, that was a challenge you know yeah. With the whole joining the band because there was, the management had left. So we had to find management that was uh, believing in us. A lot of times yeah. they're coming to us like, you guys should change the name. You know, and it was like, mm, no. and then it was like, at that time, you know, it was Igor, Andres, and Paolo. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, I'm not 
we don't want to change the name. It's like we shouldn't yeah. have to, and we're not going to. So finding a manager who was like willing to work with us um, and keep the name, and that was uh, Todd Singerman, who was managing Motorhead at that time. And so he took dope. us on, and that was dope. You know, like that really, you know, started. We're like, okay, we have this one person it's in our corner. Let's yeah. find the next. You know, finding people that really believed in what we we're doing, and so we had to prove this to ourselves. And those guys had to re-prove themselves in a weird way, you know, because they mm -hmm. had tons of people talking shit, yeah. you know, and it was just like, what happened to the love, you know, that you know, like people were treating. Yeah. I felt like not fairly you're not giving the respect that they deserve you yeah. know and i mean i saw that kind of happen with metallica when they did the black album and people were even justice for all people were just like oh no 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 yeah. this is and i was like really i was like yeah. this is some pretty good stuff and in the end they had the last laugh i mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a big laugh i was like i was like yo it's like stop dissing lars and being like oh he's a horrible drummer i was like Dude, he invented an incredible style, you know, his style of drumming, which yeah. is, it's still there. You still hear it on those albums. You know, it's yeah. like, give him the respect that's due. Give them the respect that they need. They yeah. wrote, I, I don't like St. Anger, the album, but I'm still not going to, like, deny them the respect that they got from all know. the other work they did. You yeah, know, you it's, it's, it's impossible, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy how people will want to take away everything that right. that, that he's done in the past. It's, just it's, like, it's like, what? Yeah, it's like, the don't, fuck? Yeah. We're still, we're still the same band, man. We're still, yeah. we're still, we're still and they it. earned it, man. They earned yeah. that respect, man. And that's why I always continue to like that band. You know, just yeah. they're, they're a band where I'm like, damn, still going. Still. Ups and downs. You know, it's very real. And I think that's yeah. why they have that attraction. You know, people, mm -hmm. one of the many reasons why people are attracted to that band still. Same. I, I say the same thing about, about them. I'm, I'm like, no one talks about... Okay, yes, they're obviously the biggest metal band of all time in the world, but no one talks about how they're also the most transparent metal band of all time. Like, they put everything out there. I think that's... Did. It's just... <laughs> talk about everything. I'm like, yeah, that's... For some reason, it, it's, it's inspiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if you don't like it, you still kind of like it. Yes, yeah. And, like, uh, it's, it's like having, like, like, an honest friend or an honest family member. You're like, oh, you might, might be pissed for, like, a year, but, like, <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? They're pretty cool. <laughs> right. I mean, you know what? That, I, 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 you know, I need honesty in my life. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's what I love about metal and alternative music, heavy music, you know, that honesty yeah, that's the honesty, there. It's dude. really, you know, a key factor in what makes it so... Um, it's such a loving scene, you know. It's something I want to be a part of, you know. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's like its own. It's it's its own community, its own family. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's like it's it's like our thing, right? And it's right. cool. It's cool when, when it grows, you know. Right. As you know, not not talking about like the gatekeepers, but like, I mean, like you know, like it, it grows and like it's like we're our own thing. Right. It's right. it's fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. What do you feel about like how metal's getting more like accepted? How do you? Mm. How do you feel I, about that? I think it's interesting because I think it goes in cycles, you know. It's true. You know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. definitely because the 80s, mid 80s, early 90s, it was like phew, rising, you know, it was like super popular. Yeah. You know, even within the hardcore punk scene, I mean, I've talked with this a million times with friends, like how it's doing that crossover thing, the you crossover. know, like that yeah. in the late 80s or mid 80s, like happening. It wasn't inevitable that was going to happen um but I, I think it's great you know i i think it's something like i said that honesty you know their fans are die hard you know they teach their kids what they loved and yeah. i think that tradition is passed on with heavy music and yeah. rock music and metal music that's something that i've noticed internationally you know in brazil mm -hmm. um especially um in the u.s you know it's like oh you still listen to deep purple you know and it, it's funny because I, when I moved to Brazil, I never listened to Deep Purple. It's just an example, and yeah. um, a few things. But then it's super popular there. Like a lot of young kids really? know Deep Purple. Like they do huh. covers of Deep Purple. They're like, oh, we got wow. a cover. It's like Systems of a Down, Deep Purple, um, blah blah blah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I thought it was Whoa. so cool. That is cool. And I was like, man, I was like, yeah, my dad taught me about Deep Purple and. And then we even toured with them there. It was Did like, you really? Yeah. How was that? That was amazing. 
Dude. Deep Purple, Us, and the Helicopters from Sweden. Wow. <laughs> Who put that on together? <laughs> I, I was like, "This is happening." It was like stadium, like weird. Wow. It was, it was awesome, and those guys were That's amazing. Cool. But I, I have so much more respect much later in my life for Deep Purple because of Brazil and listening. I'm like, "Damn, young kids there!" I would go to these bars, yeah. and there'd be cover bands, and they're always playing like Deep Purple. Yeah, yeah, like it was, it was amazing. Dude, that's awesome. You saw Deep Purple. You tore Deep Purple. Yeah. That was incredible. That's awesome. It's also cool to see like younger uh, people still. I always like wonder how does it happen? Like I mean, people <laughs> are still talking about Nirvana. You know, like, mm. it just keeps going. Like it's just, uh, mm-hmm. like, damn. How does that happen? I mean, they left such a big impact. You know, it's impossible to get over. It's also a time period in a lot of people's lives. You know that. Yeah. Especially with Nirvana. You know, I kind of remember what was going on in my life, and when I True. hear those songs, it brings me right back to those Here moments. Like, oh. You know, a lot of music yeah. does that, you know, puts you kind of in a time machine in a weird it way. Does. And um but it's interesting. I mean, they had such a, a tremendous impact, you know, that's pretty much unforgettable, Nirvana, you know. Yeah, one of my favorite bands. Speaking of, of hearing something that it, it takes you back. Remember like the first time I heard your voice was on Remember when you you guys put out a live song on the Tattoo the Earth? Uh, live, oh, yeah, live yeah. Compilation. Each band had a song. Yeah, it was so. What, what the hell was ours? I don't even remember what the song was. It was Choke. Oh, it was Choke. Okay, yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah, was like, the single. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, the fucking dude is pissed. Yeah, I was angry. Love, love that song. <laughs> I was angry. I was very angry. Young was, and angry. I was like, yeah. Fuck. I was young, big, and angry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> this song, this, this, this record is called Against. Yeah. If, you're, if you're not vegan, you're fucking against me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, it was, but I gotta say, like, the what really helped so much was even, I mean, living in Brazil helped a lot, I think, because yeah. I, I never felt so much love, you know, and support. You know, it was, it was insane. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even think about that before moving there that, um, especially for like a gringo you know and and gringo there is a different terminology than the rest of i guess the latin world it's oh. it's more of a, a foreigner is a gringo there so anybody's a gringo there oh. it's not from brazil oh it's a, a mm. and so it's like strangero gringo somebody that's not there it's like so getting that love it was just incredible you know it's a different world you know moving there and then people recognizing and then believing in the band. They're like, this is our band, you know, still, no matter the changes, Sepultura wow. is a representation of Brazil. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of responsibility. You know, there's people that grew up with it, you know, their father or their aunt or they're, they're like, oh, you know, as I got older, like, oh, my dad loves your band or, you know, my grandpa loves your music. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn. I was like, damn, grandpa? I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it it's that support you know it's always been there like still to this day like people are i mean i i it's my home you know it became my home wow. brazil and so it's just fascinates me when i talk to people friends and are like oh, i have a brazilian friend i told them you're in sepultura and they just couldn't believe it and and they knew it you know and they it doesn't matter the age group you know it's just like wow, wow. So that was a trip to move there and then to be recognized. And then every day, it's just like every day, autograph, photograph. As technology moved on, people got phones. Yeah. So then it just became like insane. Like everyone, oh, photo, photo. Like before, it'd be like, got it. You know, it's yeah. like film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you camera. would rarely get that. It was just an autograph, a lot of autographs. Yeah. You know, but. You know, it, as time went on, it was like every day leaving the house, it was just like, eh, yes, Apple door. like people staring or just in your business. And that was a little yeah. weird uh, yeah. for me. I, I didn't like that attention so much at all. <laughs> yeah. Even though you're getting support. Yeah. How was it getting that like attention? Well, I mean, it was, thank God it was positive. It wasn't like, you suck. You know, go back <laughs> yeah, here. It's was like, sick. get out of here. <laughs> Why did you do this? You know, I'm, I'm sure there's those, yeah, but I wasn't getting that in my face. But uh, yeah. thank God it was a majority of like positivity That's and great. like, and really helped. Um, did it help? It did because we wrote a lot of albums in Brazil. So having yeah. that support, people like, yeah, man, 
this next album is going to be great and yeah. doing a rock and Rio festival you know wow, it was a big was you know we've done so many of them and and being asked to do it year after year it's just fantastic to be a part of that yeah. and that has such an impact on the uh, the history of Brazil you know rock and Rio has a big it's a big deal you know it was the yeah. first time that people got to see a lot of rock and roll bands um in the 80s um that they were never able to see before because they had a dictatorship and there were no bands that were playing there and there was hard wow. to get albums and rock and reel kind of brought all that mixture and everything once things changed the yeah. politics and everything changed and so it's it's fascinating that uh you know we're able we've done so many rock and reels and that you know is such a brazilian thing for me you know rock and reel of course yeah. and uh just you know it's an honor to be to ask to play and we played in so many different variations of jamming with other people other people from other countries uh yeah. brazilian legends you know it's wow. just it's great but i mean that support that love of brazil is like no other you know it's it's i feel it everywhere around the world you know brazilians that are all over the world they're just like yeah, yeah, yeah. sepultura you know like everywhere that's a trip now it's everywhere huh everywhere i, I mean i've seen brazilians everywhere <laughs> like Whoa. siberia like in russia really you know with like a flag i see in the back you know a brazilian flag from their state or their football team or i'm just like wow oh my god brazilians in siberia <laughs> wow that is the future yeah we yeah. are in the future in the moment <laughs> wow yeah that's a it's so great that that you actually made the move there yeah yeah i think that was that was uh extremely important um i don't think you know we we could have gotten to know each other better if that didn't happen you know i didn't realize it would be 20 years but i really you know fell in love with the country and i fell in love with being there and um being a part of that whole scene you know it was, it was something you know very unique and you know it's, again it's like a home you know when i'm not there for a long period of time i feel like i'm I'm really missing it and so many aspects of it but it, it's definitely helped you know keep the band going you know that support from all of brazil and all over you know but especially brazil <laughs> yeah it sounds like it really helped you guys keep going like that mm -hmm. that like support it's huge huh you get like those like injections of like ins inspiration oh yeah i know? mean everyone i mean it, it really really and and the, and they're inspired by the band that the fact that we're we're doing it we're still going we're still yeah, true. um creating music so um you know it was, a, it was a blessing to be able to live there and to learn so much about the culture you know and i'm still yeah. learning you know yeah and then you learn the language yeah <laughs> it's yeah. gotten worse since the lockdown because i haven't been able to speak so much yeah. but um i dream sometimes in portuguese and uh whoa and so it's really the slang i really got down, get down pretty slang? well the slang wow. terminology so that's why people are like oh your portuguese is great i'm like yeah i can say bad words and and, and talk shit and, which That's is not up. the greatest like when you're doing like interviews or serious stuff or in yeah. front of people's grandparents and you're just like yeah this is fucking great man yeah. i love this meal <laughs> you know it's better than a dick you know you're just like yeah, go, oh, oh excuse me oh oh my oh. god they're like oh, he's so funny this gringo <laughs> he's like hilarious and see it's funny if i'm saying it but then yeah it would continue on where it was like always the clown you know always oh. funny i was like wow you sound like an eighth grader i was like okay Ooh, i had yeah. enough of this you know <laughs> yeah i was like i gotta step up in my portuguese game you know yeah but uh yeah i i i learned a lot you know it was it was definitely like learning another language and dealing you know like food and figuring out how i'm gonna yeah. eat you know and wow i mean they have great food there and everything and i was lucky about that but I started to have to make friends who didn't speak English because a lot of friends I was meeting wanted to practice their English and they spoke English and then I would become lazy in speaking Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. I started to make friends with people who didn't speak Portuguese and that would help because I was forced to speak, to try to find the words. Yeah. And it was frustrating because I love to communicate and I love to talk and being at a age in your 30s where you're like a man and people are like you sound like an eighth grader man and just treat over and over and over again 
I was just like, oh my God, this is becoming depressing, you know, like I, I need to represent myself. I have to be able to speak yeah. this language. So yeah. um, just started paying a little bit more attention, you know, on the road, those guys always speak Portuguese. So people wondering what on the bus, they're, of course, they're going to be yeah. speaking Portuguese. It would be weird yeah, if sure. they were speaking English to each other, like, yeah, sure. hello, Paulo, how are you today? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I'm great, Andreas, I'm thanks for asking. You know? It would just be weird. So I got to, I mean, I can understand a lot of Portuguese because I'm yeah. just hearing them speak. Constantly, And yeah. they're saying a lot of the same, you know, a lot of slang and bad words. So that's yeah. what I was like, oh, you're from Sao Paulo. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I live there, but... You know, certain accents and things like that. I yeah. just get from hearing them and mimic, mimicking them, you know, imitating them. Yeah. So that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're in a band, there's a lot of, you know, bad words being thrown around. So you probably just kind of took that. I was like, I want to know if you're talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, talking shit about me. I heard that, man. <laughs> now, We're now, talking about now your you shoes, know. man. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you know. <laughs> Derek, you're fucking crazy. You joined a band of dudes you didn't know, and you went... What was it like walking in the room and everyone was speaking a different language? I mean, that was kind of crazy, but it was crazier when those guys started playing. Dude, how was that? That still like gives me goosebumps. How was like, that, dude? They're like, they're like, we're gonna just play this, and so they're gonna play like you know, refuse, resist, like. Duk -a -duk -a -dum -duk 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 -duk. I'm just like, holy shit! Like, <laughs> I didn't realize that. Oh my god! Like, oh fuck! I gotta sing on this. It's, you know, it's like the power of the band, dude, like there, and I was like, how was that? in the room, you like it wasn't a show. It was like, and they're like playing and done, like, like, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sing this now, <laughs> you know that was like the most intense wow. thing because there were certain songs like Arise I would hear I was like, fuck you know like it would bring you back to when yeah. you first heard those songs if you're a fan, yeah. I was like, oh man like I didn't realize it was that fast and that heavy and just sounded so good you know it was just like. Damn, I was like, this is a simple tour, man. Like, yeah. And Andreas yeah. told me, I told Andreas that like years later, and he was like, I had that feeling when I first played with them too. Really? That's a trip. It's a trip. It was a trip. Like wow. I had to get my head around like doing a lot of the old songs and, and that became a lot easier. But as the career you know going on in the career there were certain times that we had to do shows where like we did the entire rise album from beginning to end like one show and that was really difficult man i i thought i yeah. knew that album pretty well i was like i don't know anything like b side <laughs> like b side of the album like yeah. shit i was like man it's all oh, it's starting to like blur in my head you know like it's like a lot of the songs yeah. are there's some similarities in certain yeah. songs and i was just like fuck i yeah. this is difficult you know and it was difficult for everybody, you know, it's like some songs they never played live. So yeah, it was, you know, those challenges were really, really cool. But like I said, just that practice, you know, the first practices and just hearing those songs like in a room, like, my God, you know, it's like, <laughs> like intense. That's intense. What, what is, you're always going to have that moment in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so special, dude. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times people are like, don't you get tired of playing those songs? I was like, no, because it's always a different scenario that you're in. Different yeah. people, different stage, different sound, you know, yeah. different uh, feeling of what you're feeling when you're going. It's, everything is always different when doing, no matter, even if you're doing the same song. Yeah, it's true. You know, I've done Roots here, or, you know, and, and L.A. and doing Roots in Brazil and New Zealand. You're all different, you yeah. know, doing that same song. But it's never, it, it's never the same. It's never the feeling, oh, we're doing the song again. It's always like, we're doing this song better than ever. You know, this is it. You know, like, this yeah. is the moment, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. It's cool you guys still have that fire. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think what helps, again, is like having that support from the fans and, 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 and friends and family around you, a good team of people. Oh, yeah. And then uh, it really helped, you know, having, you know, I think with Aloy Casagrande joining the band, it, you know, it really added um, so much fire to the band. You She's know, so we had good. Fucking good. Yeah. yeah. He really is. Eloy is. Wow. It's just like really such a uh, an amazing fit 
into the band and, and his love of playing and especially metal music, you know, it was just like invigorating. You know, we went through um, two other phenomenal drummers before that. I mean, really amazing, amazing drummers. They're just all very different, but it just felt great with the lawyer because he really wants to be there. You know, there was so many other problems with things going on. Yeah. Um, but to have that that energy and that that focus that he has, you know, it really yeah. um, helped, you know, move the band in a different direction. I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially again, like that that outsider. When, when we see that stuff, it's so inspiring. Mm, like, mm-hmm. dang, they're like they're older than us, and they're like we gotta like do something. <laughs> right. Shit. I know. We're like, damn, we gotta keep this fresh too. It's yeah, like, it's we're cool. We're getting older, but it's like, Jesus, the songs are getting faster, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really funny that way. Like, yeah, harder and harder. I mean, the, the songs that we keep, that we're coming up with, it's just like, wow, this is not an easy song to play. Like, yeah. we're tr- thinking of like some other stuff. Like, you know, when I think of certain songs, I'm like, fuck, this song is pretty complex, you know? in comparison to what we were doing before. You know? So that challenge is important, I think. You know? Yeah. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a, is it like a muscle? Or like you really have to just keep doing that? You know? I, I mean, definitely for, I think for everyone it is that way. I mean, especially with voice, you know. Yeah. If you continue, I, I haven't sang on stage, it's going to take some time, practice, a lot of practice to get back in that rhythm. You know, it's definitely like a muscle that has to be trained yeah, how, how does your, I'm mean, sorry for the generic question, how, how does your voice feel? Now it feels pretty weak, you know, because yeah. I, haven't, I haven't done any oh, oh, no, oh, yeah, yeah, now, yeah. But on the road, you know, it, it's it's something you have to get into your mindset and you have to really take care of yourself. Um, You know, stay away from alcohol. I oh. mean, even when I did drink, I didn't drink before a show or ever you know it's just impossible just just closes your vocal cords really alcohol and it's really bad for that as well whoa so that was something that was a plus that i already had in my mindset like i i can't drink and and do shows like it's only after um but just you know taking care of yourself you know like really staying away from like a lot of smoke a lot of talking it's a lot of discipline like a lot of people realize wow he's so quiet and you're like on the road i'm silent i can't really be talking a lot um to preserve my voice you know to keep it wow. in check for the next show so try to talk and not be in loud places where you're over talking we're just like yeah. yeah man what's going on it's like you'll lose your voice immediately damn and and then again alcohol on top of that and smoke around there because places damn. used to be filled with smoke back in, and yeah, back in the day yeah. in germany it was like oh my god like they're fucking smoking in the fucking building. yeah yeah but um yeah it's it's, a, it's it's hard you know the first few or three days four days but yeah. once you're in that rhythm it's great yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. once you get in the rhythm like you're like oh, oh yeah 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 it becomes stronger it's just like yeah i can scream my head off you know just like long screams and you know, keep it steady from beginning to the end of the show. And um, by the end of the tour, it's pretty pretty much over. It's, you know, it's, the voice is like done. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, I, I've been really good with that, you know, like really doing warm ups and warm down. And um, warm and, down. Yeah, warm down after the show, like me, 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 ba, 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 ba. Wow. And just warming down and, and, uh, Taking it easy, you know, just very fortunate to um, never have to cancel a show because of that, you know, voice. That's great. Yeah. It's like 20 years you know, over. 20 years, n- never cancel a show. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> That's why it's, why it's there. You know, I, I, need, I need wood right there since you keep saying anything, I'm not going wood. All right, there we go. No, it, it's great, like, especially, you know, like bands like us, like, you know, transparently, I mean, I'll, well, I'm like, I look at Eddie and my like, man, how long can we do this, man? Right. How right. long can we keep that aggression, <laughs> dude? That like, the, I mean, it's more so because we, because we could, you know, like we could practice, but we, I have no idea what it's like to maintain oh, a voice. Man. It's, 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 it's I mean, scary. I have no, no it's idea what scary. it's like. It's, you know what? It, it, it's scary because there were times where I had dreams where it's just like, 
I'm screaming in the dream and nothing's coming out. Oh my god! And I guess it's like an anxiety, like I wake up for a show and I'm like, I can't do this. And uh, I mean, it, it's it's a discipline. It really it takes a lot of practice, and you have to be able to recognize when your voice is hurt or in certain songs you know to keep it going you have to realize where you're you're gonna hold back where you're gonna push further and yeah. a lot of things that just have to happen naturally throughout time from touring and, and getting yeah. used to that but um yeah it's no joke you know it's it's also a mental game because it's so in your head singing you know and the first True. week it's very very hard it's just loud and you're just screaming you know yeah. <laughs> and i'm just like man why can I ever be in a band where it's just singing? Like, that must be incredible <laughs> to get off the stage and be like, yeah, fly me to yeah, the so moon. In other words, up. all right, thank yeah. you, everybody, for coming out to the show. We're going to walk away now and have our voice intact. But it's like, at the end of a simple tour <laughs> show, it's just like, hey, what's up, man? How you what's doing? Up, so I'm going to keep it low. Yeah. My head's just like, foo, 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 foo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, I can't imagine, dude. You're yeah, and then trying to head banging, like singing, yeah, like, screaming, head banging, <laughs> double whammy. Right. Wow, that's fucked up. But I mean, you get used to it. Like I have to be moving around. If I'm just standing still, then it's that's when the headache comes in. Yeah. Studio is the hardest because you're really? just in a position where you can't really move in the booth. Yeah. So much and. um huh. And you're trying, you're directing into one area specifically. Yeah. So it's just like all oh, focus on that. Just like, oh, God, 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 God. you can't, your body's there like crunching up and you just yeah. have to do it in a way where it's natural, but it's not, you that, know, it's not natural. So th the headaches <laughs> can really build up then. It's like, oh, let's oh. try that again. It's just like, oh yeah. my God, I just, I just gave you my, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just my gave best. you my everything. It's like, damn, that was, it was okay. I think you could do better. Fuck, <laughs> dude. But um, I, I love the studio, you know. I love the studio and I love the stage. It's just two different worlds, you know. Yeah. But again, I, I'm, I'm, I think I would enjoy doing a band where it's just singing as well. Yeah. <laughs> Get out the stage, hey, hang out, I, I, talking. Right? Wow. Talking. I, talk, I told Andreas this before and he's like, yeah, man. He's like, that would be great, you know, like a reggae band. We always talked about doing a reggae <laughs> band. I was like, perfect. And he's like, I don't have to be like strumming yeah. into a way where it's just like my fingers are falling off. And totally. Yeah, it's like, totally. that would be amazing. Just imagine that. You know, yeah. you just come off stage like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll smoke a cigar right now. <laughs> so, Fuck yeah. Well, that's why those lounge singers are just like smoking yeah. and singing. <laughs> yeah i'm like how do they do that i'm like i get it now i get it yeah i come off and it's just like soaking yeah. everything wet yeah. disgusting <laughs> like, yeah just drenched like a puddle around me just like <gasps> yeah <gasps> it's just like everything yeah. poured out and just like drenching out shirts i think like drummers yeah. and singers get the worst They're totally just, like, they do just like so messed up like destroyed like empty and people are like saying something like, what? Like, what? No, what? I can't, yeah. can't focus on anything. It's like, give me 10 minutes to get back in my body again. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Like, people don't realize, that, you know, how intense it can be, you know? Totally. They, I mean, it's like the saying, like, you know, like you leave it all on a stage. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and some shows, like, I mean, I can only imagine as a singer, actually, you're actually saying lyrics and words you uh, wrote. Yeah. Like, sometimes <laughs> you, like, you, like, go somewhere. Yeah. Right. Well, sometimes I try not to. I was like, man, if you think way too much, I'm like, oh, that laundry. Did I put that laundry in? Like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come back. But there's been times where I, I, I thought, like, if I think way too much, I'll forget lyrics. And I'm like, oh, oh right. You know this. Come on. You oh, got yeah. this. I can imagine. And it's just like, you're... stop thinking yeah. about it. Stop thinking about the lyrics. And it'll just come. I just need that one word. The first word of the sentence, and yeah. then it'll, you know, that's, yeah. I don't know, it's a weird thing that I have. It's just like, if I hear that first word, then I'll get the whole entire is verse. It like, is it like chain linking? Yeah. Okay. A lot of times. It just has to come natural, but yeah, it's a lot of lyrics, you know, like, so that was when there was words. so many words, and Dude. when I first joined the band, that was like rough. Like, I just remember, like, 
uh, like learning these songs and, and certain songs like Beneath the Remains. I was like, ah, I don't know this album that well. Yeah. And it's just like that song. Dan, 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 dan. It was like one of the first songs I learned. Yeah. Middle of war, not started by me. Deep, it's just like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. proliferation, yeah. Pro- proliferation, you know, like certain words he was using. Yeah. I was like, what? Fucked up. I was like, I thought they couldn't speak English at that time, you know? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I can only do the song if I'm hearing the actual music. Like, if I were to recite certain, I would be like, I don't really know. I just know from when I hear it. Like, I have to have that yeah. music in my head in order to. Isn't that so weird? Where like, if you try to remember the lyrics, you don't. But once the band starts playing, it comes. Yeah. Why? Is that so weird? Yeah. Same. Same with like, if, if you're playing the music, like, where you don't have the vocals, you get kind of lost. Right. It's, right. It's so oh, you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so why? It's like you play this song like a thousand times, but but you still need everybody there to like kind of. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Strange. Yeah. But I know you guys. You know, you've gone through the singers change yeah and so it's difficult you know it's very it's very difficult you know i definitely relate to what you're saying when like you know you gotta you know you gotta know how to work with somebody you know and and you came in uh your mindset joining the band you had the perfect mindset it's like you kind of accepted like this is not going to take one record no (laughs) this is going to take multiple records which is which is fine though because i i mean you realize the band has been playing you know people have gotten used to how that band is and and how yeah. they're sounding and um they had time to develop themselves as well to grow and to you totally. know that formation it's, yeah. it's just a new formation that it's going to take time too yeah. i think there's certain groups that have done the change that's happened relatively quickly yeah but um which is cool but i i i've just never been that type of musician totally. honestly you know i i there's yeah. certain people i know they're like really adapt to music super quickly Oh, got it. Boom. Like one. Yeah, pit. it's crazy. I'm like, damn. Yeah. What's that with me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I got to, you know, pra- I get it over and over and yep. over again, which is fine, yeah. you know. <clears throat> but it's just the process for me. It just takes a little bit longer to, to get adjusted to um, playing with different people, depending on the situation. Yeah. And, you know, it's a lot that's going in. But, um, took some time man you know we were there was a lot going on you know with us and 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 just with management and and with the past and dealing with the future and just putting it all together and just i think the main thing is just really communicating with each other was very important talking about what's going on direction that we wanted to go um and staying focused with that you know and really believing in each other you know and i think that confidence built up throughout the time of touring and everything because again those guys had been building themselves up and they got to a point where it was very well respected and then it was like all of a sudden like all these people started turning their backs um and then just really weird treatment and um lack of respect i think from a lot of like the industry and and certain people that were surrounding them and then kind of building that back up that confidence i think you know yeah of like okay there's a different formation let's you know really believe in this and and i think with aloy we're on that third album you know it's like the junior album and we never had that you know it'd been a long time since we had that that connection with somebody for a a period of time so with his first album it was like radical and really just like intense second album with it was like amazing experience and then third it was like comfortable i think everybody really yeah and taking our time as well like this the last album we really took our time with it and i think that had an impact as well on, on the sound being yeah. able to sit back and not rush ourselves and mm-hmm. um but all these things you know really add up to really that confidence was what we really um we're always you know knew that we had but as a band, as a unit, you know, we felt much stronger. Like, yeah. all right, um, Paolo's going to go in and do bass, you know, and nobody's going to be around. You know, we're just doing our things and come back. He's done all his parts, you know, a week of like that. Or Eloy coming in, like that bastard come in like four days, like, I'm done. <laughs> you know, like yeah. the whole album or a week, wow. like, yep, ready to go home. I'm wow. like, damn, he's done. The producer, like, yeah, I, never say anything like that (laughs) insane and then i'm there the last you know like Mm -hmm. 
by myself, you know, I don't have every, you know, people looking over my shoulder the same with Andreas doing guitar. I just hear it, you know, we're in the studio yeah. sleeping in the same proximity or whatever. And I was just like, oh, he's doing that again, you know, that song or, yeah. but um, everyone's doing their own thing, you know, like we're yeah. confident enough where it's like, okay, we're going to, you know, we have everything demoed out. We've done everything, the demos we're yeah. ready when we go in the studio to do our parts and, and, and to expand on those parts even, you know? Yeah, so. totally. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how long it takes to get that confidence. Yeah. It's crazy how long that fucking takes, man. Mm -hmm. To get like, but not only get confidence, but that some conscious confidence. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, th this is real. Oh yeah, right, right. It's fucking Definitely. real, man. Like now we, we, now we could throw down. Mm -hmm. And and then also having everyone on the same page. Oh, that's another <laughs> that's another fucking hard thing to do. Jesus, dude. Yeah, I mean to start a new band like now. I mean, we're talking about young kids. You know, it's like I, I don't envy them. It's difficult. Man. I mean, difficult. Yeah. I mean, I know I've done like projects and things like that, and just get people's attention you know it's really Dude. really really difficult with new yeah, stuff they're like oh, yeah you know they're like i yeah. heard it a, a piece you know it's Damn. it's difficult you know it is you know this is a question that i've been asking this and this is the one is uh and everyone answers so differently where do you see the music industry growing mm. that's a good question hopefully i i i I can't really predict the future. I just hope that um, artists are going to be able to to really gain control of the situation of where this money is going for um, digital um, plays, you know, like just to figure that out, you know, more unified and getting more money for the artists for these yeah. plays from Spotify and things like that. You know, it's just completely yeah. unfair. Um, yeah that you know that these outlets are there where they're just a monopoly on that you know where they're making the money and the artist is getting virtually nothing from them millions of plays and things like that and i just and the labels are getting money from them too you know um these deals i just hope that the future is better for artists in the future we have more control of that or unified in a way where we can go after you know the money that were deserved from plays, you know, from digital plays and things like that. So, yeah, um, I'd love to see the technology um, improve for sound, um, especially like headphones and things like that um, for the consumer um, and get off of like the probably of like MP3 type sounds like compressed and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, I'm like as an artist, it drives me crazy, you know. Like hearing, I'm just this doesn't sound like the studio at all, you know. Or yeah. just hearing certain sounds just compressed. I just hope the technology totally. gets better for that, which it will. Um, and like I said, I just think it's important that the artists are just uh, respected more in the game as far as the business in, and um, get what mm -hmm. they deserve because it's it's really bad at the moment. You know, it's always been really bad for the artists for some horrible reason you know with yeah. publishing like it yeah. took a while for people to be aware like wait a minute they they own this song you know and people yeah. are still learning you know like still, it's just like man. damn we got fucked yeah, still, <laughs> right? man. so um i would love to see it you know a unity with like artists where it's like wait a minute we should all get together and use our power in, in order to gain what we deserve you know yeah I just don't know what that plan would be, but in that aspect and also in maybe like a health insurance for artists, musicians, like a special thing, like a, mm -hmm. uh, a union for musicians where it's like, hey, I'll pay this due if we have, if we're covered, you know, like every musician that we know be, have their own artist health insurance would be great, you know, like, uh, yeah. so I don't know, like things like that I think would be great, you know, and also for artists for their future you know like a, a retirement you know yeah Some, something to be organized to be a part of that I put their tour money towards that you know certain bands or individuals you know like hey i yeah. pay this each month i'm going to be taken care of when i'm older after playing so many 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 years i think those things can be put together you know i don't see yeah. why not there's why so many not? bands and artists out there that suffer from 
you know, if you get hurt, you're you're screwed. You know, hospital bills are crazy and yeah. things like that. And and then you hear about these musicians like, why is that guy, you know, living in a shack and he did so much incredible music? You know, how does that happen? You know, yeah. like, you know, take care of each other. Yeah, it, it is. But I think I'd love to see artists, you know, take care of each other more, you know. Yeah, totally. I think I think it's conversations like this that just just like what uh what 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 you're doing with your uh with, with the health show is like mm-hmm. to spread awareness say it out there true put, put, put it out there to get people thinking differently when they you know structure deals yeah you know it's huge um i think uh having ownership in your masters are as huge absolutely you know as, as opposed to zero percent <laughs> you know, I mean, just give, give, give me one percent. It's a good start. One percent, yeah. Well, something's better than yeah. zero. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, communicating and getting it out there, having more discussions about that, you know, it's and, huge, and involving like people who may not, who are better on the business and get them involved, maybe into the music scene where they can help artists, you know, have a better understanding of or creating something that works in a way that could help artists you know yeah It'd be, i'd love to see that happen i don't see why not though. definitely i just very it's very possible mm-hmm. you know and i think uh it's also time for artists to start wearing multiple hats you know you, you <laughs> got to kind of be like a somewhat business person now know know where know where your money is going true you know absolutely you, i mean yeah, i know no doubt about that i mean it's difficult i mean it's it, i it's confusing, you know, to, to jump is. into it. And as a young artist, I'm, it's happened to many of them where they just got completely used, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. You it know? doesn't. Right. It doesn't. Well, I think the uh, future is still bright, you know. I think I, Oh, I think no, w- without a doubt. I mean, there's still music that comes out where I'm blown away and I, yeah. and I, and I love, oh, yeah. you know, searching for it, um, digging for it. I love... That's what I love being on the road. Also, I miss is that fact of that element of talking to people like, hey, did you hear this? Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I never heard. Oh, check this out, you know? And yeah. that's where I learned, you know, hear about a lot of bands, not from just sitting at home looking at my computer online, which I've done in yeah. the lockdown, I'm like, what's, you know, discovered stuff, but it's word of mouth. I love that, you know? Love like, that. <laughs> it's the best, dude. I was, at, I was at, at, at the bar the other day. I'm like, you ever heard of Spirit Box? I'm like, no. And I go home and hear Spirit Box, and I'm like, oh, shit shit sick <laughs> cool I was, I was hanging out outside someone told me about a cool band and found out about it that's I love awesome that. i love, love that. that there was a really good friend of mine i grew up with he, we were, were really into skateboarding and he was like oh you know tommy guerrera he's an incredible skateboarder and i was like yeah, yeah we grew up with him he's like did you know that he has a band i was like no and he's like yeah he plays like every instrument on it Whoa. and he's got like multiple albums i was like i was like get out of here and then i went online and I, I just couldn't believe like how amazing wow. he's written these incredible just jam albums they're just like instrumental a lot of them and it's Love that. it's so good man it's really really impressive i was blown away like oh my god man wow. this is my new my new thing man tommy Guerrero. it's awesome shout out <laughs> yes <laughs> go fucking jam that shit. skaters skaters with skills musical skills <laughs> damn so you already know how to skate man but now you play every other instrument i know fuck you dude bastards <laughs> man i could fucking barely play one instrument dude. Jesus. <laughs> there's some skillful uh uh skateboarders that uh do music so it's like a double duo it's so awesome yeah. double threat <laughs> talk about wearing multiple hats yeah yeah shit well, Derek, I don't want to keep too much of your time, man. I, I really had a great time ch- chatting with you. I learned, I, I learned a lot. Oh, that's I'm, you know? thanks for having me here. I mean, it's it's cool. It's quite a quite a voyage and worth the voyage. <laughs> yeah, thank you for making that shitty drive, man. No, no, it wasn't I, uh, that bad. I, 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 I really appreciate it. No, it was it was great. I mean, it's great to uh, to be here and to see you and and and, and definitely reconnect uh it's yeah. awesome you know it's been way too long i know it's been too long it's nice <laughs> to have like a conversation because when you're at a show it's kind of hard to have like that kind of sit down conversation you know yeah, there's like multiple things going on yeah, yeah you have like i'm out of show nerves you know <laughs> right, right you know it's like a weird thing yeah it it's, is uh, it's like oh shit i'm like you're not nervous but there is like those nerves in the air where like you don't want to like want to go out and like really like 
start t- talking to people. I just want to kind of sit back and wait for the show. Yeah, I mean, know? it's just it takes a lot of energy to do a show, yes. so it's just mentally get prepared, you know, I to know. be on stage. It's I can't wait to get back to it. You know, it's just weird I thinking know. about it now. I'm like, it's, it's terrifying, weird. terrifying. You know, it's like yeah. I really don't want to go out without that confidence, and so. uh that's why I'm looking forward to like practice and yeah. to really go through those songs again. It's yeah. it's been a long time. I mean, I don't know about you. Yeah. When was the last time you were jamming with the band? Man, it wasn't that long ago though, right? You, August, last August, ten months. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's a been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's a while. So wow, especially uh, yeah, it's like it's like a muscle. Like once like you could stop doing it, like all the way you get back. Like the first day is like. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> are, we, uh, are we a fucking local band? The fuck, dude? All those years go down down the fucking drain. What the fuck happened? I thought I was badass. I guess not. Dude. I was trying to like sing one of our songs, like new songs. I was like, oh my, in my kitchen. I was like, oh my, oh my God. And I was like, I gotta really get this. Am I gonna do this? Oh my God. Yeah, serious practice. That's serious. right, kids. Still need practice. You still gotta practice. That shit is not dead. <laughs> you still gotta fucking practice. Hours and hours. It's just, there. There's no shortcut. No. You know, as you know, as you you proved like this. Yeah. You, I mean, I mean, you're talking decades, dude. <laughs> and still, and still learning too. Oh yeah. After, Definitely. I, I, after so much time, you're you're still learning. And again, like you're, you guys are very inspiring to to me. And seeing what you oh, guys do, you, it gives me it gives us light. You know, like, yeah. like wow, like, like we like we could do this for a while. I, at I, a very high great, level man. i i still i feel the same way about uh a lot of the bands that we've toured with and, and come in contact with you know it's really yeah. has that effect you know it's yeah fantastic that's an, another great thing about touring is meeting different bands and seeing them on stage and yeah it's just uh it's a joy especially when you have like a great band that you're just like wow you know yeah. i like for us we definitely love having bands that have a different sound to take out different bands have a different sound than us because yeah. it would be boring just to have like mm-hmm. four bands of the same style you totally. know totally so uh yeah that would i mean always a learning process you know that it is, gets man. tiring <laughs> yeah always learning are you guys having any shows coming up yeah we have a tour set up for november december in europe nice. so i hope it happens you know i'm i'm staying very positive that's with the uh, sacred right and it was supposed to be with Crowbar, but I think they're not going to be able to do it. Um, but that tour we're supposed to do in the U.S. next year, 2022. Um, wow. But this, hopefully November, December, keeping our fingers crossed that that happens. It's got to happen. <laughs> it's, it's feeling good, man. Yeah, it is feeling, feeling good. good. I just want to, you know, just, just keep keep getting it right in Europe. You know, like just I yeah. hope they're able to to heal up um like it has been here you know we have the yeah. lowest rates in california wow. um than any place and it's things are, it's, it looks like fourth of july is going to be Dang. a big bash <laughs> oh my gosh that's that's gonna be a gonna big be party nuts. yeah i'm gonna be like inside <laughs> stay inside dude i'm not even taking a fucking uber anywhere dude oh hell oh, no no man no people way. are gonna be like it's america uh, back again <laughs> america's back <laughs> back baby back <laughs> fucking back Holy i love the fuck. enthusiasm enthusiasm but i'm gonna you know yeah I'm going to be a little bit, you know, keep it back a little bit. Like, yeah. I'm not going to roll out so fast, like in party mode, Dude, full on party mode. You might, you might even have a pot of coffee. Who knows? No, I, I, go I'm fucking pot- go hard, man. I'm going to go hard in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, pretty much like with friends and stuff like that. But uh, it's exciting, man. It's exciting seeing shows open up yeah, it's great. everywhere. It's cool. And, and I, I'm going to try to get in as many shows as I can go to before we start playing shows because I never yeah. get to see bands. Yeah, and so this is a good time to be like, oh my god, I'm going as a fan again, you Feels know, a good. spectator. Like, let me yeah. get my ticket. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be over here, you yeah. know, watching the show. Yeah, you know, from beginning to the end. It feels good. Yeah, yeah. Especially in September, there's definitely a lot of tours coming through. Yeah, so I'm you know, stoked about that. It's, it's cool, gonna be man. like you know, reunion of friends and yeah, music. Friends too. And, phew, I'm set. I'm ready. Ready, man. Ready, <laughs> ready. Well, we'll. Uh, where can people find you? 
Uh, I'm on the Instagram. Instagram. Um, cool. <laughs> yep. We got we got Instagram account. Uh, there is Derek Green official. Then we have Highway to Health. That's health. Uh, that we have that page. I'm not on the TikTok. I'm not on the Tic Tac yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about the Tic Tacs, and I'm not on that yet. <laughs> I have the Facebooks. The Facebook's happening. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So Facebook and uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter every now and then. <laughs> nice. Yeah. My space is over. That just ended. No, it's <laughs> that. <laughs> Kids are like, what? My, MySpace? Find on MySpace, everybody. <laughs> Google, Google MySpace. Um, but yeah, on those things and uh, cool. simple tour, of course. Awesome. Well, again, Derek, thank you for for being here. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having. All right, me. everyone. Till next time. Later.